For example, if you listen to recordings made by Louis Armstrong or Big Spider Baker in the 20s, and you see how those people were playing and improvising together, it is to me as perfect as something written by Mozart. You know, and that's the miracle of collective improvisation at that time, is that there was a real piece of music being created by several people in the same time, improvised chamber music, which has been a little bit lost in modern jazz, to my opinion, because of the preeminence of solos. And people take solos, and then you know, they just play by themselves with something in the background which they generally don't care or sometimes don't even hear. And that's something we don't want. We want some, personally, that I don't want. I want chamber music. I want something where if he plays a note, it's like I am playing it. If I play a note, it's like he's playing it. Basically, we are playing each other. He's playing me, I'm playing him, and at the end, there is no him and there is no me anymore. There is a wave of music that surrounds us, the energy is in the middle, the sound is projected somewhere, and we cease to exist. Music takes over and uses the two of us as for one single purpose, which is the creation of a musical piece. So let's see how we can work this, and that's something that, of course, you musicians should do all the time, is play with other musicians to develop that ability. So what we're going to do as a duo, you should do as a duo, as a trio, as a quartet, with like 10 people, it doesn't matter. We're going to see how we can develop that ability to feel like he's me and I'm him. Very different from interplay. Interplay is like, he plays this, oh, I hear it. You know, I listen to what he plays, and I, okay, he played that, that's interesting, I'm going to try to do it. I'll do something that works with it. I'm, I don't think that's the way to see it. That's already too intellectual. I rather, I would prefer osmosis. He plays something, it's in me already. I don't even need, need to listen to it. So who needs to uh, listen to something he hears already? When Peter is going to play something, it's going to become part of me, and when I'm going to play something, it's going to become part of him, and we won't interplay anymore. We will just be part of the same one thing. So let's see how we can develop that. We're going to start on the F blues. I'm going to play a simple bass line, a little bit like I played here. And I'm going to play phrases, like little words. You remember when I talked about words. I'm going to play words. I want you to listen to my words, not try to imitate them this time, not try to say something in response to them. Just let them go into your system and play something that's inspired by them. Like in a conversation, if I say something and you answer to me, you're not thinking, what should I answer to him? Can you imagine a natural conversation between friends like that? Oh, he's saying this, what should I tell him? Friendship would be difficult to maintain in those circumstances. The truth in a real conversation, somebody tells you something and you react to it and, and answer and you don't even think about it. It's a natural human exchange. That's exactly what I want here. Okay. A musical conversation. working here. I think we are both guilty. What's happening is that I am here and you are there. I am concerned with my piano playing, you're concerned with your sax playing, and the energy here is here and there. I want to bring this energy here. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to stop looking at my hands. I know how they are. I don't need to look at them. You know, I'm going to look at you, you're going to look at me, and we're going to Imagine how it sounds for here, how it sounds for somebody who would be over there in the room, how it sounds for this guy here. See, we're going to project ourselves out of ourselves and see how this conversation sounds from there. <laughs> ¶¶ 